Welcome to my rebuild of part 2 of this let's play, or part the 1 of today. Mm -hmm. Okay, I have some heat shit to protect you guys. Horrible offers. Now listen to music.
No, 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 wait, what? What was that offer I just gave him? Like, they sure as hell, a lot more money than he could have gotten from any other team at his age. I got his Tom Brady money for seven years. The guy feel like he can get better money from a different team. Sir, you're in your 30s. You're 34. You're about to get paid Tom Brady type money. And you're like, no, I don't want to be here anymore. Okay, Kroger. I look for a replacement in the draft. First round pick, getting a high round pick for you. Like, come on, Kroger. How far into the season did you think we were? Because we went that far. Quarterbacks. Kroger. Every team. I can give them to the Bears. And they would have Roach and defensive tackle. What team has Marco Kenny? Did he retire? Did Mark Kenny retire? Marco retired. I'm going with that first of all pick, baby. One year, thirty second, twelve, twenty fourth. 31st, 6th, 22nd, 18th, 10th, 9th, 21, 17, 8, 7, 1. Okay, Tennessee, you need a quarterback. Up, up, up. Advance. Here you go, Sean Kroger. A member of the Super Bowl champions. And now, time to check out the paper I can say, well, I, I've been traded. No, they wouldn't have traded me. To the Titans? What, why did they trade me there? For picks? T tell me there was like a good player at, in that draft as well. In that trade as well. No, only three picks. <laughs> what, why would they do that? Well, because I didn't resign. Okay, six foot one, two twenty six. The back is a B. That's all we know so far. But it's either quarter mar mat, marginal, or margin. However, that said, decent to solid, decent to solid, solid to good. Whatever that is to decent, good to great, good to great. So it's either Luke Foster, Kishan Tiger, and Tegu. Because, like, look at this guy. Poor Marvel, decent to solid, solid to good, decent to solid, decent to solid, good to great, good to great. Ah, uh, there's literally no good in this draft. Fit in for draft. Like, look at this. All we know is this guy's under pressure good, and this is good to the good, great, good to the solid to good, solid to good, solid to good, good to great. This guy. I'm taking this guy. First of all, pick is going to be Janaris. Hey, Nancy. Because, like, look at these guys. No. Wait, come on, man. What did you think was going to happen? This far into the season, you're like, I don't feel like we're signing. Like, okay, then. Walk. What? Walk. Walk away. Go bye bye. Because we're trading you. Huh? What? Why? Right, that's what you sound like. We were offering you 
almost 30 million dollars a year and you're like I don't want to play for you because that's not enough money like yeah see how much money you're gonna get paid by the titans see how much money they'll pay you go scram skedaddle okay I'm gonna now mute and listen to song 2 by Blurium This is about to be my quarterback, Callaway, or something Callaway. I think it was like Joseph Callaway. His first ever game starting. Justin Callaway, 26, 74 overall. Got pretty good speed. It's like he can run, but his throw power is an 89. Short, medium, and deep is pretty good. We got a lot of plays where like, the quarterback needs to be mobile, so like are we about to have our first out to New England. Yep, first out of New England. Ah, he said I was so certain he would do good that game. Good chemistry. This is his first ever time starting as well for the team. So like, we need him to build chemistry, get well known with the team and everything, and then see how good he can do. See how we are in our division. We ain't gonna be going up against Quentin Stitt. There's, it's like, now, now, I can get a, I can get a guy with the exact same skills as Bernard, but from the Jets, who aren't in our division, so take that. Woohoo! And I 
Check my depth chart because I need to make sure the wide receiver I currently have is active. So now here, slot wide, gotta be him. This is pretty much the line up for the slot, but I need back on here. That's the slot rate setup. Kick return. Mm -mm -mm. Should not be him. Wide receiver. Not boot. Not Cameron. Where's that rookie wide receiver I got? There's Marky. Did I cut him? He's no longer on the team for some reason. It's like, you pretty much this is now gonna be. A whole new team now. I think we've lost one of our key parts, and that was our quarterback. Our quarterback was the main thing that helped the team look as good as it did, was just because he could throw the ball perfectly. And he did not want to sign for 34 million. Well, not even 34, 20 something million. If they say almost the same amount for his signing bonus. This man was about to be making Tom Brady money in 30, at the age of 34, and he's like, no, I don't want that. I want more. So I went, okay, you can walk. I'm paying you equal Tom Brady money just because you feel like you're worth that much. We could probably make it to the Super Bowl again with Justin Callaway. Like, it wasn't just your throwing that made the team good. It was our running, our defense, our receivers who showed, yeah, we can do this. This is our team that we will help build. And you did not help that much, Callaway. He got rid of one of your main threats. And, and you somehow did better without your main threat. Hope that you go to the Bears. If you don't decide to resign any team, because then you get to join your main threat. Yeah, it's literally up to the defense to make the team good. Again. <laughs> because now we got... Uh, okay, I can make the quarterback better. Because... Him. So... Because, look. I need him on here. Oh, no, I don't need Trent Jones on there. So, I quarterback, boom. Justin's on there now. So now he can get himself used to the playbook more. After being a part of the team for almost still five years now. Who's out? McAllister, okay. Horses out.
18 games this season, so if we only won two, that means we would have gone 2 and 16. Can we look at the weekly schedule real quick? So that means there's week 1, week 1 all the way down to week 18. We lose, if we keep losing on the, if we keep losing, it would then mean this was a 2 to 16. Season. At least we beat goddamn Green Bay. Breakout quarterback? What? He did good? Justin Holloway is coming off a stellar game. Is he in the process of taking the next step? Yes. I definitely think so. 300 scrimmage or 3D touchdown to increase his development rate. Isn't he the star to. Is this man, his first season starting, about to become a superstar? Does that mean like a star? He's either a normal or a star. Either way, he's about to be getting better. God, if this man does not have a seller game against the commanders. Okay, so Callaway is going to be going up to a star, but this man does not have a good game against the commanders. Huh? I'm probably just going to be like, okay, get off my team. Why don't we do for your agency for a replacement for you? This is the goddamn commanders. Two people are out. Like if we lose the commanders, I'm cutting this man. The commanders are two and three. So far, I think Callaway is only a superstar? How? Thank God. <laughs> I swear to God, if we had lost them, I would have flipped. Victory Friday. Yep. Now I'm gonna mute and listen to music again.
we were the number one team in the NFL, in the NFC. Oh, I, I, my, my elbow just slipped off my bed and that scared me a second, a little bit. I thought we didn't make it to the playoffs. I just didn't think we did good enough. That's why we didn't have a game, but no, we were too good to have a game. Holy crap. We went from a team that people are like, oh, they just got with two of their best players. There's not a high chance they can make it to the Super Bowl. To these guys are probably going to destroy the Dolphins. And then we destroyed the Dolphins. And then we go ahead, go up against bloody uh, uh, a bunch of good teams to start the se season. Clover doesn't want to be signed. Like, okay, then goodbye, Matt. Get rid of him. And it just didn't took him a little while to get used to like playing with the starting team, not just the backups, and get used to like throwing the ball accurately and everything. So it makes sense why he wouldn't do that as good. But like for the first two games, he didn't do very good. Then his third game, just the perfect accuracy and everything needed to prove that he was. A true starting quarterback. Now he's a superstar. Almost became an X Factor. Like this man only starts for one season, almost already becomes a superstar X Factor. This man is now should not this man should not be classed as a legal person in the NFL. He should not be allowed in the NFL. If he's that good, because of how good he is. Is there anyone else I would like to upgrade? Like, like yeah, this wide receiver I have definitely going to upgrade. There we go, playmaker went up. We need my guys to be able to become playmakers, because if they're playmakers, you ain't being stopped. Yo, they're making a big play. Next week. Who are we going up against for in this week? The Bears. Oh, this is literally the battle. It's Roach. For, it's pretty much the revenge game of Kevin Roach and his old team, who replaced him for someone better and younger. For someone younger than him, he wants to prove that he's better than the young blood. Stones out. Of course. Of course he has to go out in the game against one of the best wide receivers. <sighs> no, I'm gonna mute and then get back to this and into Hurricane. That was that we were just was started playing before I had to
and Kevin moved his grudge match for getting traded to the Bears for high picks. He did not get his team to win there. Welch had the least amount of catches and one after cat, like yards after cat. Like this man. What happened to him? Well, I don't know what happened. He joined the Bears. Just like, look at this. He only, this guy, like, already only caught it nine times, but that's 140 yards. Gotten, he got three touchdowns. Yeah, my like question, yeah, I think gonna be too good. Like for rushing for the Niners. Both teams like this guy is not even the starter he did. Better than their guys. Receiving. Again, this guy caught the ball more, but had less yardage. And less touchdowns. Like, dear God. They okay. So the first people that allowed the least amount of sacks was him, 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 him. Because all the guys who are just good at not allowing sacks. Defensive total tackles is Don Taylor. Yep. Total sacks. The person with the most is Brown. Wait, no, no, no. I want to see the interceptions. Wake Newton had the only interception in the entire game. Look at this, kicking. Are you telling me he did not kick any field goals? Alright, we have a puncher for that. Like, is this, they're not getting pretty much showed. Like, yeah, you're a part of the Bears now. You suck now. Oh no, who's gonna be scared? Of the guy who couldn't even get the ball more than two times. Hmm, who's gonna be scared of that? It's like being scared of a toddler. Ooh, the Rams. This is the treated division rivals. They have the exact same record. Like, look at this. Callaway just shows. Yeah, I'm better. I'm better than you all. 29 out of 40. That means he only missed 11 passes. Four passing touchdowns. He was sacked only three times. He had four carries for two rushing yards. Dear God. That sucks. Daredevil with that day, I want to know this video. Yes, 
inside this, uh, 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 something in my eye. Can you, uh, 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 can you just point out which one the red one can is? Point out which, no, I can't see something. There's like three of them, man. Come over here and okay, do it. Okay, all right. Uh, uh, to be honest with you, though, <laughs> this was fun. Interesting. You know that thing I said that was in my eye? Yeah. yeah that, that, that thing? Yeah, yeah, it's blindness. What? I'm blind. You, you quit, quit fucking with me, no, man. No, I'm like completely serious. You know, I've been talking to a lot of people. You should go for the honor of having disclosure. I, Really? I just want you to do a fucking front flip onto the roof. You just tell us you can't be two feet in front of us. I can still kind of see, you know, it's kind of like sonar. So I can tell where you are and all that, but when it comes to color. Oh, when it comes to color, you shit out of luck, right? Hey, let's not talk about luck, all right? You're the one strapped to a park. Yeah, I'm, I'm well aware. Oh, God, of all the fucking people who could have helped. I, 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 I,
Jam production leader caused Jamie at the last minute direct 1978 as well. He said she would have preferred to have more press time for it, but I think it came out great. Okay, great. Alice is played by Ryan Stitchman, 
whose younger brother died in the Jurassic World. While director Lee Green that gave all the actors playlists of 70s songs in order to help familiarize them with the era they see depicted, Simpsons did extra credit for their character Alan. They put together a funky playlist and modeled themselves after counter culture figures like Stone Dead, Debbie Harry, and of course, David Bowie. Alice's bad reputation puts her at odds with her ex-childhood friend, Cindy, whose desire to do good also causes friction with her sister, Ziggy. Ziggy's more like part one. A negative fancy says that Jamie Snyder's are fated to live in eternal misery. That's the death of us and Ziggy. She that by working hard, she can make something of herself and get out of Jamie's eye. Cindy and Tommy yes. had a few time with the killer man, but no slang comes in since she saw Tommy's name on a wall. One way her yeah, one way or another, she's gonna get ya, get ya, get ya, get ya. Nurse Lane's not great at the whole killing thing, though. So Tommy knocks her out, and she ends up wheeled away on a girl again, like an early Friday the 13th final girl. Yeah, like a Jimmy. As track three from Ziggy's startup play, Cindy goes to Ziggy for some information. She was the last one to talk to Nurse Lane before the attack, so maybe she knows what was up with all that. Maybe it was the witch. Ziggy. What, that doesn't fit your carefully constructed bullshit view of the world? They didn't think it's so good at playing the pissed off, be against the world tough team. And you can't blame Ziggy for being that way. He's a shady sider. We're all cursed. We got a death curse. Despite the nurse lady, the camp continues with its color war fight. The clock. annual after the flag match between Shady Side in blue and Sunnyvale in red. And they take this shit seriously. Just ask Sunnyvale Counselor Kirk. Oh, my God, so well, Peter. What power and ancestors before us and murder those Shady Side witches? Dude, why does anyone from Shady Side even come to this camp? This is the week of getting shat on by the wealthy neighbors. Tonight is Sunnyvale for Shady Side. It is good versus evil. What? Are they trying to earn a merit badge and be mothers? With some canvas and some face paint, this color war is ready to go. Tommy's not ready to carry No, out no, he can't stop the playing. He can't the confusion in his hat. Cindy takes Tommy to the nurse's office, hoping to find a clue as to why Nurse Lane attacked him. Ha, huh, the drugs could have been witched out. Who's just that? A couple of them No, the son of a motherfucker. <laughs> Bonding session 
difference between the Daisy Sider and the Sunny Valor. And you can tell they're about to be star-crossed lovers when Lou Reed starts singing Sweet Jane on the soundtrack. After all, the Cowboy Junkies cover of this Velvet Underground song is what played during Part 1's lovemaking sesh. Maybe 1666 gets the Mata Hoople version. Their foreplay comes in the form of backstory. Ziggy says her life sucks because she's a shady sider, and Nick bemoans the pressure he's under as the first son of Sunnyvale's leading family. Being the heir apparent isn't always easy either. This is great characterization to give to Nick Good. He wants to be weird and frolic around with this shady sider, but he has a duty to his family in the town of Sunnyvale. This makes stuff that happens later compelling and tragic. Right now, though, Sweet Jane is doing its thing. Ziggy and Nick cross enemy lines to swap some skin. The cover war rages on, with Shady Sider Jeremy acting as Team Blues Jailer to some captured red team Sunnyvale. Jeremy's played by Dylan Gage, who appeared in an episode of Stranger Things, but who I know from Pen 15, one of my favorite comedies. That's why I feel extra bad for him when he gets hanged and loses his captain. And it's why I feel extra, extra bad for him when Tommy shows up and freaking murders this kid. Holy shit! I keep telling y'all, seriously, don't fuck around! Jeremy's body is found by the other campers and counselors, setting off a panic that recalls everyone to the mess hall. Cindy and Alice are still trapped underground, and one of them isn't all that optimistic about getting out. We're gonna die down here. Just like Gordy. So navigating these tunnels proves tricky at first. Cindy figures out that the witch's mark doubles as a map of this cave system. They follow it to the center where things start getting nasty. Oh shit, really nasty dog? What the fuck is that thing? Let's get out of here. Yeah, dude, fuck this creepy bug brain. Alice can't help but touch that cave feet, and when she does, she gets a flash of past Fear Street murders that already went on part one's kill count, so I won't double count them here. Alice also sees a vision of a super bloody Cindy, which sends her running away until she falls and breaks her leg. Since Alice and Cindy haven't made their way to the mess hall, Nick tells Ziggy he'll go find her sister for her. He volunteers Shady Side Counselor Gary to help as well. I love Gary's reaction to that glimpse of romance he gets. Hey, you realize that's a camper, right? Gary's played by Drew Scheid, who was Oscar in Halloween 2018. Allison's friend who had the motion sensor scene with Michael Myers. Speaking of Halloween, 1978 continues its honoring of slashers with a scene involving sex, drugs, and a killer point of view outside the window. The sex scene gets us nudity from both participants. Kurt, the alpha sunny baller who led the color war rallying cry, and Jones, the crunchy shady sider who believes in peace and love and finds Kurt sexy. He might be dumb, but he's kind of shagged down. Since he makes her horny, baby, they get their shag on. After they're done and Kurt leaves to wash up, Tommy Slater appears with a punishment for Joan being naughty. He violently hacks her to death with his axe. Good thing she came to camp prepared with some strong-ass double-sided tape. Cindy catches up with Alice and mends her broken leg and their broken friendship. She does so by admitting she's just another shitty shady sider. No matter how hard, she tries to prove the curse wrong. I told myself if I was perfect, if I did everything right, I could beat it. This sentiment is familiar. In part one, Dina accused Sam of trying to escape Shady Side's curse by moving away. In Shady Side and Sunnyvale, history is always repeating itself. Cindy notices that weird red box on the cave wall, indicating they might be by the outhouse where she got her shirt stained and her butt grown. To the horny toilet, onward! Nick tries to gather up the remaining campers, but the shipbird Sunnyvale Red Jailer demands his Shady Side Blue Captain stay put. After he leaves to see what's going on, the prisoners meet Warden Tommy Slater waters these shady side kids off screen. Although I only see three of them here in this shot, I hear four axe strikes, and later, Nick mentions finding four bodies. So I'll use the names he says at that point and assume there was a fourth victim just off screen. Ziggy re Treasure. Arr! These are tampons. You want one? You win, porch pirates lose. With package tracking from Yahoo... Ziggy realizes she left Sheila locked inside the buggy bathroom, and when she gets there to let her out, Sheila attacks her. Their struggle is overheard by Cindy and Alice as they follow the moth to the camp's shit can. Yo, no one noticed the toilet holes led to, like, a cave system? The fight between Ziggy and Sheila also brings Gary around, so he's there when Ziggy discovers that her sister's now living her life as a toilet mate. My sister's in the toilet! What? They lower a rope and bucket down and start pulling Alice up. Damn, Gary, do work, son. Oh, shit, Gary, watch out. It's Tommy Slate. Oh, and off goes his head with an axe. Fuck yeah, I love a good decapitation. Oh, and then his headless body falls and lands on top of Alice. Sick. Ziggy flees Tommy's axe Gary, to strike the no. death player and runs into the woods until she comes across Nick. They hide in the science and nature cabin, and Nick tells Ziggy that Tommy must be some kind of psycho. But Ziggy knows Tommy and 
says he's really a good guy. So she blames his behavior on possession by Sarah Beer. That's not real, Ziggy. It's exactly what Sunny Bella would say. Quite different. Whatever the matter's with him, Tommy's quite the determined feller. He punches his way inside and starts stalking them with an axe. But don't even think about killing that snake for real, bro. No need to pay homage to Friday in that way. Not even when it ruins the tape by spiking the camera. <laughs> you know, he's almost on the wall. Tommy grabs Ziggy and swings his axe towards her, but Nick saves her and takes the blow on his leg instead. Tommy ignores the good boy, though. He's only interested in Shady side prey. Literally everyone he's killed so far has come from the Blue Brand roster. Alice and Sydney find themselves stuck in the damn cave. Damn, again, it must suck. That sticks around They're up part of Smackdown and they and keep getting attacked. Out, there might be an exit at the mess hall send Cindy ahead without her so she can save her sister. Ziggy's gonna need that save and do. All the other campers just peaced out on a bus. Once again, gotta question the bus driver here. They didn't see or hear the teenage girl screaming behind them? Thanks a lot, bus driver. If Tommy catches her, that blood's on your hands. Ziggy runs into the mess hall and hides in the kitchen, leaving a trail of footprints to intentionally lead Tommy past her hiding spot. Kinda like what Danny Torrance did to Jack in The Shining, which I was also reminded of as Tommy hacked away at the door with an axe. Ziggy manages to stab Tommy, but he fights back and overpowers her. Once again, Ziggy's struggle is heard by a subterranean Cindy, who has reached the mess hall from the caves and is trying to kick her way out through the floor vent. During their fight, Ziggy slips a potato sack over Tommy's head, giving the Nightwing Killer the appearance he had in Fear Street Part 1. This itself is a reference to Friday the 13th Part 2, back before Jason Voorhees made the hockey team but still had to cover up his thing. Tommy's actor McCabe Sly plays the masked Nightwing killer in Fear Street Part 2, but his stunts were performed by Lloyd Pitts, who played the killer in the 1994 storyline. Also, I've got to shout out Cindy's actor, Emily Rudd. I saw an interview where she mentioned Lloyd Pitts by name when talking about acting with a stunt performer. Actors don't always mention stunt performer names, so good on you, Ms. Rudd. Before the Nightwing killer could turn Ziggy into stardust, he's stabbed in the back by Cindy Berman with a knife. Although we know he comes back later, as an undead killer, I'm counting this as Tommy Slater's human life ending. The sisters hug and Cindy apologizes for ever doubting Ziggy's shady side mantra. Everything is cursed. Ziggy apologizes for being kind of a dick, giving us a harmonious happy ending. Hey Alice, get up here and join in on the happy ending. Alice says she has a way to make this ending even happier. Because after Cindy ran off in the tunnel, she found more clues in the witch book. That caused her to dig beneath the red moss, and you know what she found there? Sarah friggin' fears friggin' hand. And remember what they keep saying about that friggin' hand? The curse will last until body and hand. That means they can end Shadyside's curse of murderers by burying that hand alongside Sarah Fear's body. Better make sure they take care of it. That, uh, damn it, Ziggy, watch the blood. <laughs> Good job. You bled on the cursed hand. Ziggy says she saw Sarah Fear just like Sam did after she bled on the bones in part one. I saw the witch. Part two shows us what happens after blood hits the bones. Since we zoom down into the cave system and watch as that pulsating heart of darkness it's out of being made of black goo. This is how the killers of Shady Side's past are reformed and brought back to life, which means the late Tommy Slater gets an immediate second chance to do some more killing. There you go, Tommy. I knew you weren't one to waste a good opportunity. You're doing great, man. You're like zombie Jason now. Try not to listen to the haters. Fuck it. Oh, snap. You lost your head, Tommy. That's not very zombie Jason of you. Still, zombie Tommy's flashing wasn't in vain, as Alice succumbs to her wound and bleeds to death on the mess hall floor. The sisters hear a familiar song coming out the cave. It's Ruby Lane singing about how you always hurt the ones you love. The heart of darkness has brought her back to life, as well as some of her shady side friends. And sure, Tommy, you can have a third run too. Why not? Ziggy and Cindy take the skelly no. to the hanging tree which is where Sarah Fear was executed and where her body should be buried. As they dig for it, they're approached by various shady side killers, including inaugural shiny shady sider Billy Barker with his bat. The sisters don't find a body, though, only a stone that says the witch forever lives. Huh, can't really attach that skelly hand to a rock, can ya? As the shady side killers close in on them, Cindy tells her sister to run, hoping to buy her time by taking a shovel to Tommy's face. As Tommy fights back, Ziggy is apprehended by B-tier shady side monster, the Milkman, who stabs her in the gut? Oh wow, big push for Milkman there. I thought that dude was a mid-carter for sure. Jokes aside, this is a seriously tragic scene, as the sisters get stabbed and hacked to death in slow motion. It's depicted so brutally, the violence unforgiving. It's downright sad when we watch them die together, laying side by side. I'm on the verge of crying here, man. When is this series called Tear Street? 
these kills were filmed near the end of Fear Street's exhausting 100 plus day production, which is why Janiac said she kept adding more and more blood. It was just like a real reflection of where my soul was at the time. <laughs> At least the fake blood tastes like mint. Sadie Sink actually said she liked it. It's actually really nice. With Ziggy dead, the killers disappeared, since it was her blood on the bone ham that brought them back. And just to make sure everyone understands, I want to clarify what we know about Sadie's side killers so far. As Nurse Lane indicated, and as we saw in the tunnel, when a person's name appears on the wall by the witch's mark, that person becomes inexplicably violent and murderous. It happened with Tommy Slater tonight, and in the past happened with all our faiths. Ruby Lane and Billy Barker. Bleeding on Sarah's bones, however, triggers a completely separate event, which we saw happen with Sam in 1994 and Ziggy a few minutes ago. When that happens, the Heart of Darkness spits out gloopy copies of past Shady Side killers. No matter what you do to them, they'll keep coming back and chasing the person who bled on the bone. The only way to get rid of them is for the bones leader to die, which is why they disappeared after Sam was drowned in part one and after Ziggy bled to death on the ground just now. But lest we forget, Steve Berman is telling this tale in 1994. My sister was dead. And so was I. Ah, there's that OG man who sold the world. So much spookier. Nick Good finds Ziggy's body and brings her back to life with magical movie CPR. This is the twist to Fear Street Part 2. See, Berman wasn't Cindy Berman. It was Ziggy, whose real name is Christine Berman. Wait, you're Ziggy? Uh, I'm sorry. How'd she keep that a secret while telling a two-hour story? Did she speak in third person the whole time? Or that just doesn't make any fucking sense. In any case, Nick was able to save Ziggy's life. But Cindy? Yeah, not so lucky. Ziggy tried to tell everyone about the zombie shady side killer. But no one believed her, not even Nick Good. You don't become sheriff talking about ghost stories. Oh yeah, that guy becomes the sheriff. I almost forgot. As our flashback concludes, we see 11 victims laid out in a row. Now, I've counted 12 kills throughout this episode, but I think Tommy's body is still running around. Ziggy was brought back to life, and we saw Cindy's body being carted away. That means I've only counted 9 of these victims leaving me with two kills I need to add to the count to square up with this shot. This also jives with the newspaper article we saw in part one's opening credits. That mentions 12 victims, but an unknown killer. So 12 victims plus Ziggy plus Tommy equals 14. Present day Ziggy tells Dina and Josh they'll never be able to end the curse. They'd have to reunite Sarah Fear's hand with her body, which wasn't under the tree like it should have been. But Dina and Josh know where Sarah Fear's body really is sitting beneath some red moss on the side of the road. Now they just need the hand, which Ziggy and Cindy left beneath the hanging tree. That sends them to the Shady Side Mall, which was built where Camp Nightwing stood 16 years prior. You can actually see the tree in part one's opener, where you also see that Cher Good walked with a limp, a result of the axe strike he suffered, saving Ziggy's life. Dina and Josh retrieve the hand from the mall courtyard, and Dina drives it back to the roadside mall. As soon as she reunifies the hand with the rest of the skelly, she has a psychedelic trip that sends her psyche back centuries. We're going back to where it all began, to get the witch's story. Sarah! Sarah or at least we will next time, to be continued again. How many people left this camp at night on wings of an angel? Let's find out. Oh, oh lord, he's coming! <laughs> By my count, and that one shot near the end, there were 14 kills in Fear Street Part 2. We have six male victims, six female victims, and two I'm not sure of, because they're wrapped up in teeth. With a runtime of 111 minutes, that left us with a kill on average just about every eight minutes. I'll give the Golden Chainsaw for coolest kill to Ziggy and Cindy Berman. It's a double whammy that's filmed in a super serious way, especially when they cut out the sad music and stop the slow-mo, but the killers keep on stabbing just the same. Add in Cindy's dying words that nothing will keep the sisters apart, and you've got a masterpiece of a death scene here. Don't ever said he... Alpha Betas is out? What? I thought that show existed. Well, episode 2 is out currently, and 3, so time check was out. Wait, one of us gets cancelled. Yes, it can, I'm scamming. Hey, no, um, whatever character you play on there, man. If Thanos does not get cancelled at some point, I will be shocked. Because this man has made so. Okay, I had to make sure I wasn't muted. Has made so many jokes 
about his black friend only when they're making videos together because he's like I I got Marcel here I'm allowed to make these jokes now haha <laughs> nerds I don't seem more as racist as I should Think mm, yeah so it's time to watch this Jesus mates it must take him so long you can't rush bagel bites buck that's the entire okay. point of bagel bites Mason Like I said, you can't rush bagel bites. Yeah, man, they've been speaking my language. All those beeps and boops. Oh, hey, Allison. Are you guys kidding? The entire CIA has been calling you for hours. Oh, yeah, sorry. I lost my phone. It's in your hand. Oh, there it is. We have a big problem. Four days ago, a rogue coder entered the CIA mainframe. No, and... no, 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 nope. no, no. We're going to have to stop you right there. Uh, what do you mean? Allison, come on. Are we really gonna pretend the last 18 months didn't happen? Ugh, you wanna talk about COVID? Ew, no. I'd rather get COVID than talk about COVID. Then what is it? You replaced us with Bravo Team, took away our mansion, gave us erectile dysfunction! Fine, I screwed you. <laughs> How, how did how did they cause that last part exactly? You gave us a wet cloud dysfunction. How the fuck did they cause that? Magic. Okay, and now I'm here, tail between my legs, because every team I tried to replace you with has failed. And you're wasting your breath, Allison. He's moved on. To what? I'm glad you asked. Spunk. Spunk is live, baby. What the hell is a spunk? After you took away all our stuff, we got ourselves a new AI. He's just as capable as Steven, but way cooler. God, does he look like that on purpose? Yikes! What do you say we bang a quick U-turn from Bummer Town, huh? Spunk, give Allison a little taste of what we've been up to. On it! <laughs> Welcome, Allison, to the apartment of a group formerly known as Alpha Team. Since your cold-blooded backstabbing a mere 18 months ago, the guys have been busy. Real busy. Finally free of the CIA's bullshit, Tommy converted his passion for emerging digital markets into a TikTok channel where he teaches his rabid fan base how to buy and sell things that don't exist. Crypto, NFTs, blockchain. Mason took his talents to the world of YouTube streaming where he plays for a rapidly growing audience. Ah, thanks for the love. 69 with my cousin? Ugh. Buck leveraged his natural charm to start a bustling OnlyFans where supporters pay top dollar for his hyper-current social commentary. <laughs> Christ on a bike! Don't get me started on him, he's only a gobshite. What used to be a military unit following the corrupt orders of the CIA is now a group of friends following their hearts. And they're happier than ever. Look, individually, you guys are clearly the biggest assholes in the universe. Why, thank you. But together, Why, thank we're Alpha you. Team. And Alpha Team is special. So I'm asking you to come back together because the world needs you. For one last mission. And wait, where's Eddie? Spunk. Eddie was so emotionally destroyed by your treachery. He disappeared on a vision quest to find his purpose. No one has heard from him since. You haven't talked to Eddie in 18 months? We worry about him every day. But it was his choice to leave. I'm respecting that is what this is all about. So we don't have fancy cars, a mansion, or sexually functional teams. But we're finally doing what we want, and that's worth more than anything. Well... If you ever change your mind, we will never take orders from you again. Alpha Team is dead. Eat shit, Allison. Ring. Video call. It's 
Mason's publicist. She says it's urgent. Patch her through? Nice. Like, add her to the call? Or maybe I can hang up, and then when she calls back, you guys pick up. Finally. What the hell is wrong with that spunk guy? Literally nothing? He's perfect. Why? I'll get right to it. In 72 hours, one of you will be the subject of a devastating Wall Street Journal expose. What the hell is a Wall Street Journal? Guys, there's no easy way to say this, but... I told you not to rob that old guy in the Ikea parking lot. I thought I was in the metaverse. We don't know who it is or what. <gasps> I told you not to rob that old guy in the Ikea parking lot. God damn it, stop robbing old people in Ikea. They did. Just that it was something so despicable my source wouldn't even repeat it. Everything we worked for. Gone in an instant. Please, Chloe, we'll do anything to fix this. Normally, we rehab your image. Charity work, one of you surprises a returning soldier with their dog. But this is so scandalous, it would take something massive, global, and heroic. All this before the story breaks. Are you telling us the only way to avoid being canceled is to save the world in the next 72 hours? I meant it more as an unattainable figure of speech, but sure, good luck with that. I can't believe we have to go back to the energy division. This is going to be so awkward. Awkward for you? I just told Allison to eat shit. None of this even matters unless we find Eddie. You know we can't do this without him. We promised we'd never track him down. One of us is about to be cancelled, Mason. It's our only option left. Spunk, any chance you can run a path of triangulation on Eddie's cell? <laughs> Obviously. <laughs> oh my god, you guys. Eddie's in the Sri Lankan jungle. Pack your shit, boys. We're headed to Sri Lanka. I, that seems to, there's a 50-50 chance it's either a real place or just something they came up with. Sri Lanka. What the fuck is Sri Lanka? It just sounds like a weird version of a swear. You motherfucking Sri Lanka. <laughs> that was quick. Oh shit, they went to Best Buy. You're off by one number and Sri Lanka suddenly becomes a Best Buy one mile away. Yikes! Are the $8,000 flights we bought refundable? They are not! Happy, Happy birthday, birthday to you! What the hell, Dale? Will you please clean the bathroom? I've asked you three times! You've been divorced three times. And you still haven't learned to fuck yourself? That's it! You're fired! Great! Thanks for the unemployment check. You chinless cuck. Uh-oh. You've been working a mile away this whole time? I'm on a vision quest. Eddie, look at you. The quest is over. Luckily, we've got just the cure. Remember when we left the energy division? Yep. Worst day of my life. Along with every day after that. Why? One of us is going to get cancelled. Cancelled? Shit, it's probably me. I've been doing some dark shit at Best Buy. Look, we don't know who it was, <laughs> but we're reassembling Alpha Team to save our public images by saving the world. We know you were always the one with integrity. So if our selfish reasons are... I'm in. Wow, really? I gotta be honest, I kinda thought it would take more convincing. You know, with Allison destroying your entire life and all. Nah, you guys are my team. I'd do anything for you. Just like you do anything for me, right? Of course! Obviously! Always! Cool. Because I do have just one small ask in return. When the mission is over, I get my revenge on Allison. Permanent revenge. Oh, hell yeah! Get your revenge! No. Alpha Team is our last hope. Time to get our affairs in order. We're back! To save the world for completely unselfish reasons. Security breach! It's down on the ground! Who the fuck are you? It's me, Eddie. Eddie! Oh my god! Oh my god! Did I see you eating trash outside of a Best Buy last week? It better have been me. That trash can is my territory. Well, thank you. It's better have been me. <laughs> This is literal just comedy these guys would make. So, 
I'm happy it is made by them. For putting the fate of humanity ahead of our troubled history. It's water under the bridge. The same bridge I'll be hiding your body under when this is over. What was that, Eddie? Nothing. He said he's excited. Right. Well, Somebody we'll jump right in. Body Steven? Under. I thought you'd never ask. Spawn can do that, right? Oh, yeah. Probably even better. A rogue coder, inexplicably sick of the fair CIA working conditions, snapped. It wasn't fair, though. Destroying his generously oversized office, he turned his rage towards something far more sinister. Hacking the energy division system that controls the U.S. military. And what was once six games, spanning multiple genres, is now one mega game. If it crashes, so does the power to the entire defense department. Bro, she sounds kind of fun. Wondering. A simple power outage, how bad could it be? Well, during the 1977 blackout, NYPD lost communication for just 12 hours. And in that time, 1,600 stores were looted, resulting in the arrest of 5,000 people. Well, if it was in Boston, it made sense. You can't have shit in Boston. Now imagine that on a national scale. Best case scenario, full-blown anarchy. Worst case, the end of America as we know it. Yeah, fuck America. You have less than can four go days down to the secure the game there. and save the world. Watch the Wall Street Journal. Yeah. Alright, we'll do it. Under two conditions. First, we need to wrap this up sooner. In like, I don't know, just picking a number here. 71 hours? Why? You could just go ahead and put a ticking clock on 71 hours somewhere for us on a screen. That would be really appreciated. Okay, fine. What's the second? This mission is over. Nope, not that. Spunk needs top secret clearance. <laughs> Sorry I'm late. I never knew you could strip search an AI, but those guys were thorough. And let me tell you, it megabytes. Who the fuck is this? That's Spunk. He's our new AI. He's also our best friend. You bought a friend. That's Spunk. It megabytes. Who the fuck is... Okay, at least. I was about to say, did he fucking censor himself? Is this. That's Spunk. He's our new AI. He's also our best friend. You bought a friend. <laughs> I would've been your best friend for free. <laughs> and weird statements like that is why you never will be. Fine. Well, and weird statements like that is why you never will be. Don't worry, Steven. You can stay back as localized support. Great to have you guys back. Hey, Eddie, you okay? Of course. I finally have something to look forward to. Guys, one important detail before you head in. Yeah, yeah, we're saving the world. No, I mean the code of program this game to be different. Oh, let me guess, it's harder. Thanks for the pep talk, Mom. My mistake, I forgot how heroic and masculine you are. But this time, if you die in the game, you die in real life. <laughs> That's literally the end of episode three. I, motherfucker, can I, my, can I brain? Can I brain? Probably not. Ready? We better party while we can. Oh, damn! Congrats on the underwear glow up, girl. Don't you need a lot of money? Forty-two thousand. Are they in? Mm-hmm. Great. I can't believe they didn't flinch at the whole die in the game, die in real life thing. They were surprisingly brave about it. Oh, help! Get us out of here! Everything okay in there, guys? Uh, missed that belt in eighteen months. No, everything is not okay. We didn't know we were signing up to die in real life. Any other big surprises, Ruby? Ah! Woo! <gasps> wow. Wow. <laughs> wow, that was a short episode. Why the hell am I a woman? Since the hack, we lost control of the game, so you were auto-assigned body types inside. Luck for head four. I hate horror games. And that was before we could actually die. You hate horror games? Try being the black guy. At least you're not the only woman. I'm gonna be dead in minutes. Especially wearing this. I mean, come on. Who designed this? Uh, oh. Ugh. Can we get a calling it right now? It's a message from my mom.
A jacket or something? Oh, so your male gaze is my fucking problem now. I forgot how stupid these guys are. Time is ticking, Alpha Team. Three games, three final bosses. All because we lose control of the U.S. military. No, you lose control of the U.S. military. As a reminder, we're here fixing your mistake. Almost sounds like you're the stupid one, huh, Allison? Just get to that huh, entrance, Allison. beat the boss, and find the portal to the next game. All right. Oh. Are you boys ready? No, I'm not ready. I'd rather be canceled than dead. I don't know what's scarier, this game, or how attracted I am to myself. Allison, get us out of here now! Again, as Ruby mentioned, we don't have control of the game until you get it back for us. You can't force us to save the world, Allison. You're right, I can't. But they can. Back in the saddle. Any bites? We good? We good? Yeah? I think so. Oh, thank God. My greatest fear has always been slow death by zombies. Where is Eddie? Ah! Uh, and uh, you need some help? the ship! I think Eddie meant by taking oh, permanent revenge on Allison after this was over. He didn't mean like kill her, right? Of course not. Come on, Eddie. He murdered. What? Dead. No way. He was upset. Yeah. But now that he's back doing what he loves, he'll forget all about it. He'll... I mean, look at him. He'll probably thank Allison for giving him the opportunity. <laughs> we avoid being canceled. Eddie's happy again, and we save the world. It's the ultimate win-win. Brett neutralized. The mansion is just over that hill. Great day to save the world. Oh, huh, Eddie. What? <laughs> oh, yeah. I forgot about that part. <laughs> Everyone good? Yeah. That was a close call. Uh, Tommy? No! I'm gonna turn into a zombie! Quick, suck the venom out. Venom? That's snake. I don't care what it is, just suck it out! It'll just be in my mouth! So you're not gonna try to save me? I'm all for saving you. As long as it doesn't endanger me. Relax, Tommy, you won't turn into a zombie. That's not how the game works, just keep moving. See? You're fine. You didn't know that! Is he really gonna be fine? <laughs> uh, absolutely not. He'll be a zombie in a few hours. But if they know that, they'll waste time saving him instead of saving the world. <laughs> This place is probably crawling with zombies. Yes. Killing them will be good practice for later in this mission when we... Yeah, that too, I guess. Mm. Yeah, that's what Get your hands off me, Tommy. Sorry. I'm just hungry suddenly. Not a piece of meat. Oh, that's too bad, because I'm craving. Oh, my God. What's wrong? I'm turning into a zombie. If I turn into a zombie, I die in real life. Tommy, we feel terrible. We are way past their fear. Oh, help me! Yeah, okay, fine. Hey, Allison, we've got a problem. Tommy's turning into a zombie. You want us to take him out? Like, out of the game? No, like kill him, so he doesn't eat you guys. Never mind, I'm feeling better. Can you at least send us some backup when Tommy dies? <sighs> if Tommy dies. The rigs are full. We can't send in another person. I'm not talking about another person, Ruby. I'm talking about someone who's been with us through thick and thin. A key member of Alpha Team. Oh my god, it's happening. And he is the day I dreamed of for you. Spunk! Spunk time, bitches! Oh! Allison, you can't do this. Why? It's not like this can get any worse. We will see about that! What's up, guys? Oh, oh my god! What the hell? It's me, your friend, Spunk! Why are you a sheep? We're all sheep, Spunk. But not for long. Uh, Eddie, yeah, can we, uh, leave a tab open for that combo for a sec while we figure out the sheep-spunk thing here? We needed a living body to port Spunk into the game, but since everyone is dead or a zombie already, sheep were the best option. Well, I would have preferred a human skin for my first full-body experience, but as I always say... Meh! <laughs> How was a sheep supposed to help us when Tommy turns into a zombie? It's sheep's fault or nothing! 
This is my lowest moment. But if you hurry up and get to that portal, you can still save Tommy. Steven, prepare to dispose of Tommy's body when they don't get to that portal fast enough. What? Oh, shit. Is my mic still on? You sure this is the only way, Ruby? Long hallway, flight of stairs, then into the main ballroom should get you to the portal. And whatever is guarding it. This is a death trap. Only one way to find out. A sawed-off shotgun? Why is this the weapon of choice in zombie games? Shy <laughs> trigger finger? No, it just doesn't make any sense. These things attack with their teeth. Why do I have a gun that requires me to be close to them? <sighs> and if they don't get you with the teeth, Zombie cannon suggests they can infect you with their guts. And for some reason, I have a weapon that creates maximum guts at the closest range possible. They have zombie guts all over me. You don't see me caring about it. Exactly. The amount you don't care about it is really worrying us. <laughs> this thing's blast radius is so wide. I'm swimming in zombie goo. I'm not shooting this thing again. Ugh. 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 What the hell? Wait, are you not a zombie? No, I'm just tired. I was so excited you were here to rescue me. I thought no one was left alive in here, Ruby. There's not. Anymore. There's not. Anymore. There's the portal. This fails one more time, just trading you. I can't believe we made it. Ugh, Tommy wants to eat. Never mind, we're screwed. <laughs> nope, now we're screwed. Where do you think you're going? We don't want any trouble. We just need to get to that portal before our friend here dies. Little late for that, don't you think? Time to end this, boys! For Tommy! For Tommy! Shit, what? yikes! Gross! Oh. What do we do? Maybe there's another way. There is no other way. That portal is the only way forward. Oh. Any ideas, Eddie? Listen, I was in a dark place when you found me at Best Buy. And while we all might not have the purest intentions for being here, getting to do this job one more time with you guys has made me realize We're coming! Spunk, what the fuck are you doing? I got this, boys! It's Sheep Spunk time! Oh, perfect! Come right into my open mouth! Sheep Spunk! in history. I never doubted him. Not even for a second. Oh. What about Tommy? Sorry, guys. He's gone. Wait! According to the game manual, there is one thing that can bring him back. The blood of a virgin lamb. If you're asking if I'm a virgin, the answer is a resounding yes! It's been an honor to serve, fellas. I'll see you in the next life. Tommy. Tommy. Is that you? Uh, what happened? You were a zombie, but you tripped a bigger zombie, saving the day. And then Spunk sacrificed himself for you. I told you Spunk was a great call. How did he save my life? We cut off his head and force fed you his blood. Oh, what the hell? That's disgusting. It was either that or you died. Well, I guess if the only thing I put in my mouth was a little sheep's blood, it could be worse. Yeah, that is totally the only thing you were eating. Yeah, you bunch of guys. Portal, Allison. You better pick up the police salvage team. Only 40 <laughs> hours left. Great day to save the world, huh, Eddie? Well, at least now it's on the list.
Now it is. I'm not gonna wait for the seven. Damn. I really wanted to know what his revenge was gonna be. Was it making them watch worst YouTube ever content? If so, they definitely need to. If so, they better be careful. <laughs> Allergies. English 100. North of the border. I'm pretty sure that's where I am. Either north, south, west, or east. One of those. Let's go. Hey folks, my name is Adam and I like to make tiny nerdy things. And if you're anything like me, then for you, Halloween is one of your absolute favorite days in the entire last week of October. So in honor of this spookiest of days, I decided to make a little oogie book. Now, while I know that some of you will make an argument, A Nightmare Before Christmas is not a Halloween movie, but a Christmas movie instead, and while I think that you're unequivocally wrong, I can yep. at least understand why you've been led so far astray. However, to appeal to that portion of my misguided viewers, let me just assure you that I was in the shops last weekend, and I heard Mariah Carey and Michael Buble singing back-to-back -back Christmas songs, which means our capitalist overlords have decided that Halloween and Christmas are now one big joint holiday season, that runs from mid-October straight through to Christmas Day, thereby facilitating the existence of this Schrodinger's cat of a movie that is somehow both a Halloween and a Christmas movie at the same time. Anyways, at this point I've built up an Oogie Boogie aluminium base that I can start constructing my bloated bug-filled burlap sack on top of. And to build said bug-filled burlap sack, I'm gonna start with a base of translucent clay. Oogie Boogie's body is going to be made up of a specialized glow-in-the-dark clay later, but it's incredibly soft and hard to work with by itself, so we're going to build up the bulk of his underlying structure using translucent clay in the hopes that it won't be nearly as visible through the soft, translucent-looking glow-in-the-dark clay I add later. Now, it's entirely possible that I could have used a much easier to work with Super Scopey underneath since this top layer of clay probably isn't see-through anyways, but given that today is Halloween, it seemed appropriate to make the entire sculpture using my spookiest, ghostliest white clay. Clay details aside though, I've got the core of Oogie Boogie's body fat enough and I can get to work adding his head, which, much like his body, starts as a vaguely recognizable aluminum core wrapped in a gnarly white clay then coached into a somewhat Oogie Boogie shaped shape. At this point I'm only interested in the large details and the proportions are a little off so that I can add more or less of the glow in the dark clay on top of it to finalize the size and details afterwards. Otherwise, with the head in place, it's time for Oogie Boogie to bake in the oven to harden up the underlayer, and I can finally get to the star of this show, Glow in the Dark Clay. As you can see, this stuff is nearly indistinguishable from the translucent clay, and you'd be forgiven for thinking I'm just messing with you by using the same stuff and photoshopping the thumbnail to make it look like it glows in the dark. Except, this stuff literally glows in the dark, and it's just the tips. Even with a quick blast from a UV light, it lights up enough to be clearly visible in a still somewhat lit room. And it ain't even cured yet. This stuff glows in the dark while you're working with it. 
I'll use my pasta machine to press the clay into a nice thin sheet of glow-in-the-dark lasagna, which I can then slap onto Oogie Boogie, covering every square inch of his body, making sure to remove any air bubbles that get trapped underneath. Since these will expand and cause unsightly cracks, my final burlap sack sculpture. Since this will be my final surface material, I can also take a bit of time now to bulk out all the parts of his body that are left thinner or smaller in the pre-glow-in-the-dark design. Finally, with the portions closer to where I want them to be, I can start adding the finer details. Now, this clay is pretty awesome as a final product, but it's pretty tricky to work with as it's incredibly soft for a clay and it's frustratingly sticky, so sculpting any sort of fine detail takes a fair amount of practice and patience. Two things which I either don't care for or have yet to find. Fortunately, Oogie Boogie is a burlap sack, a couple big eyes, and a toothless black maw for a mouth, so he's probably the perfect candidate for this type of material. Eventually, though, I poked and prodded this half-melted marshmallow of a clay material around enough that I'm happy with the look of my burlap sack villain, and I can start smoothing the surface out to prepare for adding the texture on top. Before I do that, though, I need to add a bit more support for his feet since he's a little top-heavy on his otherwise spindly little legs, so I'll clear away the soft clay, drill a couple holes into his feet, then stick some support wires into the bottom before covering them all up again in clay. feet finally finished, I can start the top layer texturing by first drawing the line that separates his two burlap halves with one of my metal sculpting tools before coming back through with a softer clay shaper to make the lines a little less sharp. Now I'm wearing white gloves because I thought this might help reduce the fingerprints, but then I realized I'm going to be rolling his entire body with texture later, so they really just kind of got in the way. While I've got my clay shaper down, I'll take a minute to give his lips a bit of texture by way of torn lines across the lips, then I can start adding the stitching along the length of the line I added moments before. This is easily achieved by using the flat end of this tool I had lying around, but later on in the project I couldn't find it, so I made a perfectly serviceable stand in using a bit of wire off in the same shape. To add the burlap the sack playoffs. texture, I'm going to use the grip on one of my tools, which should leave the surface with a pretty convincing burlap sack surface look. To add the texture, it's as simple as just rolling the handle over the entire surface, then baking the whole model to lock the texture in place, before moving on to adding all of the oogie boogie body rolls. And like all good things, Oogie Boogie's body rolls are made up of 100% grade A certified wormy dealies that get rolled out extra fat and wormy e. Yep. Then applying along his body wherever I think a good body roll would go. I'm trying to keep the body rolls somewhat lined up with where I would expect to see rolls for a burlap sack. But if you wanted to be perfectly accurate, you could probably use a pillow for reference or a bag of rice or even a particularly chubby infant. Yeah. Otherwise, once you've got your placement figured out, you can start blending all the work into the center body, removing any of the sharp lines and harsh edges, then rolling them nice and smooth before hitting them all with the same burlap sack texture. I'm working in sections to make it a little easier to hold, since he's a pretty chunky burlap boy, and this clay is very unforgiving of accidental bumps and bumps. Finally... Dan Campbell. Before rolling the next section, I'll make sure to redraw any of the stitching lines so that they contour to the new rolly body shape. Then it's into the oven to lock these rolls in place, and I can get started adding the rest of the Oogie Boogie's body rolls. Eventually, Oogie Boogie's looking pretty good with a tad albino, so it's time to give him some color. That being said, though, I don't want to cover the glow-in-the-dark clay with anything opaque since that would defeat the purpose of the glowing-in-the-dark thing, so instead I'll have to make an extra special, extra transparent brown wash.
To make this wash, I'll use a transparent umber ink, then cut it with some acrylic medium which needs meat with a transparent brown. Then to help improve the flow of my paint, I'll add some flow improver, and then to help water it down, I'll add some water. I'll mix all this together, and I'm left with a very thin, nearly transparent brown wash that I can safely apply over the entirety of Oogie Boogie's body. The ink has enough pigmentation to stain the light-colored clay, but still allow the glow in the dark to shine through, while the flow improver will help it settle in the recesses without peeling on the flat surfaces, which should very nicely highlight all the texture that I added further. Then a bit of undiluted brown ink added to the seams will naturally flow into the recesses, helping to highlight the stitches and really make them stand out. Finally, I can paint Oogie Boogie's eyes black, then do the same for his big mad mouth. And that's him finished, and we're ready for the glamour shots. With your permission, I'm going to do some stuff. and a big old thank you to you for visiting me on a month just Yes.
And I feel like we started off really crazy with the chip implanted in her wrist, and then as it went on, it was kind of just like, and I can, like, uncork a wine bottle without twisting, and I have an automatic soap dispenser. And it's like, yeah, so does, like, a Wendy's bathroom. It's not that cool. With things like the soap dispenser also, unless that's, like, plugged into the power of the house, I find that the hassle of, like, having to replace the batteries for that one ha 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 no matter who it is, I'm going to get a pick. This guy. Yo, I would love for my Alexa to offer me drugs. No. Job. Yes. What? You're telling me I don't get a house and get like a free dentist daily? Michael Jackson. Oh God. <laughs> oh, keep children away from that guy. Thank you. 
found out that this is Lisa's house, and she'll open my life, so only your voice. Yet she's mine, so back off. It's not even like a seductive sounding woman's voice. It sounds like a GPS computer's like, oh, and these men are about to abandon their family. What else can I do? Moving targets are incredible. You hear the lights? That music coming through these loudspeakers? Amazing. What else? So he keeps asking, what else does she do? Like he's expecting something. Like he's really hoping that something's gonna happen. And what else does she do? I mean, come on. When is she gonna come out here so we can have a little fun? No, I don't think you understand. She's not a, she's not a person. She's a robot. Where is this chick, dude? Where's she hiding? I can hear you. Privacy policy. That's just something that will be crazy. Asia. Have you 
ever noticed that like your phone becomes obsolete in three years because when they release a new version of it, they're like, okay, and your phone doesn't work anymore? You want them to do that to your fridge? I will never buy a smart fridge. Fuck smart fridges. On top of Tip Girl on TikTok, there's also all of these accounts that keep trying to advertise products. There's like a bunch of accounts, like this account, My Korean Home, that have like these like smart house products and all of their accounts have links in their bios to the stores where you can buy all the shit that they talk about in their videos. Watch what life looks like when you live in a smart house. So you might be a little confused by that clip. While Tip Girl's smart technology was so mundane that it was just kind of boring, this apartment I feel like is so smart that it solves problems I didn't even know existed. Why is it snowing inside? Why is there snow in the hallway and in the elevator? I don't know. Is this like a commentary on global warming where like it's going to be so hot outside that it needs to be snowing inside to counteract that? She gets home and like sprays her jacket with a laser. I don't even understand what the problems she's solving are. So I don't know if these are like good solutions for it. What is she spraying off of her clothes? Was the snow actually bugs and she's killing the bugs? I don't know. That's a horrifying thought. Okay, so this is a shoe heater. She puts her shoes on a shoe heater that way next time she ventures out into the frozen wasteland that is her apartment building her feet will be warm at least i don't know why she has to warm them for like the next 12 hours if she's like just getting home from work and she's like these will need to be warm at 6 a.m tomorrow so if i start heating them now they should be 300 degrees next time. then there's this thing i don't know what this thing is at all it's like a bluetooth speaker looking thing at first i'm like does this kill the crap does it play music for them is this a bluetooth speaker i don't know i don't think it has like music and the mystery intensifies when she does the same thing with a few oranges. Because you don't need to kill oranges. And I know they don't like music. Okay, now I think we've gotten past the smart home stuff and she's just cleaning her house. I think some of the stuff in their store is just like general cleaning supplies, organizational stuff. We're like halfway between this like completely post-apocalyptic society and just like a normal girl that wants to clean her house. Yeah, she's like cleaning her toilet bowl like completely normally. You have Bluetooth speakers for taps and you don't have a like I don't care about you, Charmin. No one likes you. Take my life. You will miss me greatly. 